Division One, cause number uh, CA TX 13-0002 CCI Europe versus the Arizona Department of Revenue. Um, for uh, the party's information, uh, these proceedings are being recorded both audioly and visually. Um, hopefully, in a week or two, you'll be able to see yourselves on YouTube if all the equipment works. Um, you're shaking your head like you don't want to. Yeah. Uh, please identify yourself and your client uh, as before you um, begin your argument. Um, the podium uh, will indicate how much time you have uh, for your argument. Each side will have 20 minutes. Um, the appellant, you may reserve a portion of your time for um, uh, for rebuttal. But if you will tell us how much time you want, then we will um, um, uh, allow you to have that. The, uh, as I said, the clock will tell you how much time you have. If you want to uh, want five minutes of rebuttal, then tell us that be when you s when you stand up. Um, if you see you've got ten minutes, that ten minutes includes your five minutes of rebuttal. You got to keep track of your own time. But we will try not to horn in on your time. Um, and with um, we have uh, read the briefs and the relevant portions of the record, um, so we're familiar with the facts of the case. Uh, and what the issues are. And so with that, you may begin. Thank you, Your Honor. May it please the court. My name is Jerry Fries, appearing on behalf of the Department of Revenue. I hope to save four or five time, minutes of my time for rebuttal. Okay. There are two issues in today's appeal. Number one, can a publishing operation qualify for the manufacturing deduction under 42-5061-B-1? If not, the department prevails. The second issue, if publishing can qualify under the manufacturing deduction, does P&I use the CCI software directly in its manufacturing operation? Underlying each issue is the requirement that exemption claims, and that's what's being claimed today, a deduction claim or an exemption claim, that they be strictly construed, that they be clear, and that they be unequivocal. This is a meaningful limitation and should not be treated lightly. I think it's easy when we, when we read or put in a brief or read in a, in a case this requirement, but but again, it's a meaningful requirement. All cancel. Are you arguing that the software is not a part of the newspaper manufacturing process, or are you saying perhaps you're saying both that producing a newspaper is not manufacturing? Publishing is not manufacturing. Manufacturing is taking raw material, converting it into a finished product. Isn't, isn't that what you do when you, how do you not manufacture a newspaper? Well, the, the deduction is limited to manufacturing, the conversion of raw material into a finished product. A lot of steps go into manufacturing before the actual manufacturing. You have design, you have technical work, if you're creating a car, creating a piece of music, creating a, an Apple iPhone. So how much of that process after the creative process is manufacturing using the CCA Europe software? Well, the, the manufacturing, the printing in this case is, is influenced by what is created. There's no doubt about that. Whether well, it, as I understand from the record, it helps lay out uh, the font and the, the, the columns and then they go someplace else and then they put ink and paper to it and Correct. someone delivers it to you know, our morning uh, doorstep and that we get to pay taxes on Right, it. but that is not a manufacturing operation. That's not a manufacturing business. That is a publishing business, and there, there's no deduction for publishing. If the legislature intended to extend the deduction or the exemption to publishing in the way that they did to job printing, they would have done that. They didn't do that, and that has meaning. What's the, what's the definition of uh, manufacturing? Well, the definitions that we provided, both from the Department of Revenue Regulations and from just general dictionaries, are the taking of raw materials and converting them into a finished product. Isn't that what we have? Here? Well, we don't, because the downtown Phoenix headquarters, uh, as in the Wall Street Journal or PNI or the New York Times, they do not manufacture at their headquarters. No one could walk by the downtown headquarters of PNI and say a manufacturing operation is going on in that building. But but why does it have to be at that building as opposed to their de rally? Because operation. that's the nature of manufacturing is. The manufacturing is the conversion, the creation of a finished product out of raw material. 
and there is no raw material other than creative content going down, going on down at PNI's headquarters. But at, at Deer Valley, they're producing the paper. They are printing. There's no doubt about that. Okay. And so, well, I, okay. Okay. How does this? How does the Board of Tax Appeals and the New Times matter? help inform our decision? It doesn't. It's completely irrelevant. It, it arises from the statute. It doesn't arise from, from state board decisions. It doesn't come from AG opinions from 25 years ago on an unrelated matter. Exemptions arise from statute, primarily. And then secondarily, they arise from, from case law, interpreting the statute. And it has nothing to do with Missouri case law or North Dakota or Maine or whatever it might be. We have a unique statutory framework here that doesn't talk just gen generically or generally about manufacturing. It talks about job printing and publishing. We treat them differently. Uh, Council, it seems to, to me when you, uh, that printing, generally speaking, could fall within the definition of, of uh, manufacturing, and I don't see any specific statutory uh, exclusion Taking, taking the making of a newspaper well, out of the definition of manufacturing. Right. If printing included, or if manufacturing included printing, there would be no reason to include the job printing uh, classification, the job printing activity in the deduction in the statute. It would be redundant. Well, the, the, the Republic doesn't do job printing. They well, they don't. They do a newspaper. Right, but I'm saying the physical act of printing, I thought the question had to do with the physical act of printing, is that manufacturing? If it can be considered to be manufacturing, then we have to look at the statutory framework. And I think the court's question is applicable in a state like Missouri, or again, Maine or North Dakota, where you just have the general manufacturing deduction. You have nothing more than that. We have something more than that. We have job printing, we have publishing, and we have manufacturing. And if the raw act of printing, of taking raw materials and converting it into a finished product uh, included manufacturing, then job printing would be redundant. You wouldn't have to include it. So I think it's clear the legislature did not intend and did not mean that printing if, can qualify under the job, under the manufacturing, the generic general manufacturing deduction. And I think the, that's, that has to be the meaning given to it. If not, then job printing, the inclusion of it, is redundant, and the exclusion of publishing is meaningless. It has no meaning, and it clearly has meaning. And it has to have meaning, and as we all know, courts, and we all have to give meaning to statutes unless there's some extraordinary situation. And the situation here is, here is quite clear. Printing is not manufacturing. And as between two different printing operations, job printing and publishing, only job printing gets it. And in the end, job printing is more of a manufacturing operation than publishing. As we demonstrated in our briefs, publishers can sell their printing operations. A publisher does not need a printing plant. They can sell it, and the integrity of the publisher will remain intact, and they just farm it out to a job printer. And what, the, what CCI argues is basically newspaper printing is manufacturing if we do it and it encompasses the entirety of what we do, including our publishing. But if we farm it out to a job printer, and a job printer publishes, that's not manufacturing. That's incoherent. It's the same physical manufacturing operation. And, and so, again, we have to give meaning, we have to give effect to the statute. And I think the tax court, I think what the, where, the, where the court is going is, in the beginning of the tax court's ruling, it read very well for the department, pages one and two, I thought we won. The court said the creation of content is not manu manufacturing. But then we got to page three, and he said, but you need content. And because you need content, that is manufacturing. And I think the problem with what the court did is, as we know from Capital Castings and Duval, when you look at a deduction, when you look at an exemption claim, you have to look at the nature of the activity. And the activity will have a beginning and an end. And you have to define the beginning, and you have to define the end. And I think what the court did on pages one and two of its opinion is it really did define the beginning and, and the end. It defined it as it properly should have. It said the beginning is the beginning of the printing at the printing plant and the end of the printing. And the creation of content is not manufacturing. But then we got to page three, and the court said, but because you need content, under the integrated system or the integrated doctrine, because you need content, it will be manufacturing. And I think that's where the court got it wrong. It's because once you've defined the qualifying operation, the integrated doctrine is concerned with what within that qualifying operation can be considered to be being used directly in manufacturing. You don't, under the integrated doctrine, once you define the qualifying operation, go beyond that. You don't go beyond it and say, well, if you need content, if you need design work, if you need creative content, 
well, that's publishing um, or that's manufacturing. You can't do that. The qualifying operation is not publishing. If it were publishing, the legislature would have said that. They didn't say that. So if the software creates the, lay the layout and the look of the newspaper, which is necessary for the you know, for lack of a better phrase, the printing presses to press out the newspaper page, then that's not a part of the manufacturing process. That's not a part of the qualifying operation. Then where would it, if producing, and I'm not saying that you're conceding this, but if producing a newspaper is manufacturing, where does that process begin in the creation of content uh, end? I think it's easy in this case, you have a printing plant. It begins when you hit the print button and the act in the printing machine begins operating. Uh, in the context of publishing, you can publish something, uh, whether it be a paper or a magazine, and in the case of a paper, it's sent automatically. The electronic signal of the software is sent automatically to be published. But it could equally be, be kept for a week or a month or whatever it might be, and then be sent to be published. So I think this is an easy case. What's the beginning of the manufacturing? Well, we know. We know the definition of manufacturing. It's the conversion of raw material into a finished product. And the Deer Valley plant is about as, I think, easy as it gets. The thing that made the case in Duval so difficult, I think, was Duval. It was such an enormous activity. You had a mine operation and you had a refining operation, and it encompassed several square miles. And so it was tough, I think, for the lawyers and the judges to get their ideas around the head. You have an incredibly large physical operation here. And they had to figure out whether or not, as we know in, in Duval, whether or not the booster pumps nine miles away uh, that pumped water to the refining operation uh, constituted part of the physical process of manufacturing. And in that case, it was a physical process. And the court said it's enormous, but it all qualifies. It's all part of an integrated system. Here, uh, we have a, a defined space up in Deer Valley. It could be 10 miles away. It could be 500 miles away. It's defined by the, the beginning of the printing process. And here, unlike in Duval, in Duval, it all involved a physical operation the conveyance of water, the pumping of water. What takes place downtown in P&I's headquarters is not a physical operation. One day, they may, as Time Magazine did not long ago, they may go entirely online, and they will have software like CCI software, and they will not print, and they will just go entirely online. Will that be a manufacturing operation? No, that's not a manufacturing operation. But it gets back to my uh, earlier question. So how much, what portion of this, is for the manufacturing process with the use of the CCI software. As opposed to online? Well, as opposed to the journalistic content. You know, uh, the reporters get the information, they write it up, and the editors manipulate it, and it gets then formatted, and electronically it's off. And so, you know, how much of the use of that software, if we know, uh, is for you know, uh, the creative content as opposed to the publishing or manufacturing content. Well, I think the f given the fact that they publish, I mean, everything that they do is with an eye toward publishing, toward printing. And so uh, I, okay. I, I, that, I think that's... But when they, if, if they ever decide just to go online... Correct, correct. And like uh, any of the, the blogs or, you know... Huffington Post or you know, Slate or any of those, then Correct. at that point in time, they've lost it because they're manufacturing nothing. Well, I think they never had it, but that's another issue. Okay. Um, but again, the, the issue is physical, uh, the physical creation of a finished product out of a raw product. You can take any number of analogies. A recording studio, you go into a recording studio, you're Johnny Cash or Madonna, whatever it might be, and they have software and recording equipment and hardware and the like, and you create music, you create sound. And eventually that, in the days of Johnny Cash, might be a reel-to-reel. -reel. That reel-to-reel -reel will be sent to the LP factory or Madonna or whatever. It's going to be electronic. It will be sent to the LP or the CD factory. But what takes place in the studio is not manufacturing. When you make an LP, that's manufacturing. But why, why, isn't the, why isn't the newspaper printing portion of it 
I, I guess I'm still not following why that is not manufacturing. There's a beginning, there's an end, there is, um, there, there is a finished product. They take raw material, they take uh, ink, paper, water, and they come out with a newspaper that's got print on it, it's in a certain order, folded up and delivered. Because Why isn't that portion of it manufacturing? Because I think by statute the legislature effectively said manufacturing generically, but when it comes to printing, printing is not manufacturing. And as we know, when they amended that one statute that had to do with job printing, when they included job printing in that statute, which contained the word manufacturing, the legislature said, you know, let, let us be clear, we are adding this. You know, so if manufacturing had included job printing, you wouldn't have needed to add job printing. But they add, so, the, Your Honor, the, the answer is basically, physically, generally, generically, you're correct. But as a matter of statute, the legislature said, no, printing is not, that will not qualify for the manufacturing. As between printing activities, we will decide and we will tell you which printing activities qualify and which do not. And the printing activities of a job printer qualify because we said it qualifies. So, a publisher does not. So we, you're asking us to infer that the statute excludes publishing or printing a newspaper from the definition of manufacturing because it explicitly includes job printing they include as uh, uh, manufacturing. You've made it seem as if the statute explicitly excludes publishing from manufacturing, but that's not the case, and that's not the basis of your argument, correct? Well, there are two parts to the argument. Number one, publishing cannot qualify for manufacturing generally because the legislature in the statutory framework says printing is not manufacturing. It, it, we will include job printing. Uh -huh. yeah. Why include job printing? If printing were manufacturing, then why do you need to include job printing? So I think the legislature did that. And then secondly, the argument is, again, if you, if you believe that a publisher can qualify under the manufacturing operation, then the issue is, is it used directly? And, and we believe it isn't. I'd like to save the remainder of my time, if I may. Okay. Thank you. May it please the court, my name is Ben Cooper. I represent CCI Europe, Incorporated. The department is correct that there are two issues, but when they get down to the bottom of the second issue, it collapses into the first. That is, in their reply brief, their essential argument is, the reason this is not directly used in manufacturing is because publishing is not manufacturing. So really, everything comes down to the first issue because Arizona clearly follows the integrated rule, not the Ohio rule for use directly, although you wouldn't know that from the department's argument because they're essentially uh, urging the adoption of a narrow test for what is used directly, the Ohio rule, that the Arizona Supreme Court and capital castings explicitly rejected because they said it was too narrow. Council, a question I have reading the briefs is, in the unique situation of printing a newspaper. Right. Where does the creation of content end, which I think we might agree is not manufacturing, and where manufacturing a newspaper uh, begins. Where, where is that line? Well, I could tell you one thing. The line is not at the use of CCI software, because this is software not for the creation of content, but software that's explicitly and purpose-driven for creating the physical product you have. That is, the only reason you use CCI software is to create that newspaper. You wouldn't use it, for example, if you were writing an article. As I said in our brief, the tax court analogizes software to Shakespeare sitting down to write Macbeth. It's not uh, playwriting software. It is the jaggered father and son who typeset the first folio. That's the correct analogy. This well, is well, well, so the information in the record that suggests that the software is used by the reporters to input the text, which is then formatted, is that wrong? Well, it's, it's incomplete, and it suffers from what's known as the fallacy of composition. There is, in fact, 
a very customized version of Word embedded in there. So for example, if you upload the, 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 the let's say the reporter writes on their laptop, they write on their iPhone, they write on their tablet, on anything, or the photo, it then gets uploaded. The editor can go in and edit it in the software. You know, you find out the article's an inch too long and you go into the software and you cut it down so now it fits nicely in the space. Yes, there is there, but that's not what the software is there for. The, the, it also indicates the, the record that the, um, the reporter doesn't sit writing their articles in this. They write it on their laptop, whatever they would use, and then it gets uploaded in there and there's an editing capacity within the software. But the software is designed to replace what, you know, uh, I used to do in college on newspaper production, which is, you know, either setting the type, um, and I've set actual metal type, or printing it out and waxing it up and putting it on a board or on setting lines and photographs. It's the actual production of the paper, without which you cannot have it. Now, this software does two things. It allows you the creation of the actual newspaper page without which you can't produce it. So it's, we're not claiming the deduction here for laptops or camera batteries. Now, we cited in our materials cases where they said machine or equipment deduction does apply to regular laptops that are used to create content uh, because I think the, the Missouri court said that production manufacturing starts when you input the words. Um, and there was another case that involved batteries for the photographer's cameras and said that was subject to it. But we're not even that far back. We're talking about the software that is used to create, you know, what you would have been before the plate or the metal type that was used in production. We, it's done electronically now. So this is dedicated not for the creation of Word documents, but for the creation of a newspaper page. And then beyond that, it also directly interacts with the production process because it encodes everything for use on the presses to tell it how much ink to use, how much water to use, whether it's, you know, whether this should be run four, four times through the press for four color printing or one time. It's directly uh, linked. Now, the, the tax court said, I don't know about this creation of content. It sounds like broadcasting to me. Well, I don't think it is. But the court found that the second half of it, the interaction with the actual, man, the actual printing presses, was sufficient to bring it in. We would submit that it comes in either way. So, where, so you asked, where does it start? It may or may not start at the level of laptops and cameras. But it certainly starts at the point at which you're taking the content and putting it into software designed to create the actual newspaper. That is, you're not creating the content, you're creating the actual newspaper layout that's used. Because at this point, you're replacing linotype machines that created metal slugs to do this. It's just we're better at it. So it's, what, 90% of the software's used for uh, manufacturing as opposed to? All of it's used for manufacturing. The question is, could you use could a reporter, once they've loaded their stuff up, actually use it to edit? Maybe, but that's not the predominant use. You know, it's a lot more expensive to buy CCI software to, than to buy Microsoft Word. It's designed for the production process, and it's not used, the record is very clear, for, for example, the online, you know, AZ Central. They use a completely different system for that. This is designed specifically for newspapers. It's used by newspapers to create a physical item. Now, we can get into a discussion of what happens if the Republic went completely online. That's not this case. And the remarkable thing is the department takes the position that canned software is a tangible personal property treated the same way as a disk, um, no matter how it's delivered there. So I think they're, with all respect, talking out of both sides of their mouth because, trust me, they would come by and declare that this was taxable as tangible personal property if it were online only. But that's not the case we have today. Well, we're obviously talking about CCI and its relationship to PNI, but how, at least based upon the trial court's, tax court's decision, how broad is this? this would this uh, you know, impact uh, the Green Mountain publishers up in Flagstaff? I'm not sure what you mean, how it would impact Well, them. you know, if we say that this publishing is manufacturing. Yes. Uh, with the little publishing house up in Flagstaff, uh, Green Mountain Publishers. Absolutely. You drive by every now and then. Uh, if they use the CCI software, would it, you know, also be manufacturing as they produced, you know, uh, six copies of a book? 
Well, you wouldn't use this for books okay. because it's specifically designed for to manufacture newspapers. newspapers. Okay. But so I don't know what would go into the manufacture of books if you would use anything more than you know, Microsoft Word. This is very specific production software to make a newspaper. So you'd have to look at what the factual record is, what they were going to be. Now, the, when you go down to the issue of whether a publisher is a manufacturer, uh, Mr. Fries's argument is curious because he acts as if there's an exclusion for publishing from uh, manufacturing. There isn't one. Um, in fact, normally when you get, and he, his argument relies on two things. First, he says you have to strictly construe the term because it's a deduction. Well, the legislature has told you in this specific deduction, deduction what the rule of construction is because you're, and you're mandated by the statute itself to construe the term manufacturing as it is, quote, commonly understood within its ordinary meaning. So while Mr. Uh, Freeze is arguing for a very narrow Arizona-specific meaning, that's not what the legislature has told, said. This is not the method for construing the statute according to the legislature. Now, the second thing is, normally in this situation, the department is standing by its regulation, which takes a narrow view, and is saying you have to defer to a regulation. This is the opposite, because when it came down to defining what publisher meant, the department's regulation, that's uh, R15.5.1303 A and B, defines publisher as one who manufactures and distributes a publication, and then defines publication as to include newspapers, magazines, and other um, periodicals. So the department itself has said this is manufacturing. And of course it has to because the Black's Law Dictionary, which we provided last week, uh, at the time when it still defined publisher, said a publisher is one who manufactures a literary production including books, magazines, and newspapers. So that is the common understanding. And the department says, well, we meant that generically. Well, that's what the legislature has told you to define it as. Use the ordinary meaning of it. And they've used the ordinary meaning. And frankly, when it came down to CAN software, and we provided the evidence in, in their taxpayer ruling and in all their orders, they keep talking about one who manufactures CAN software as opposed to personal software. So it's clear that their interpretation of, and use of the word manufacturer has always interpreted, has always followed the general understanding, which is if you take raw materials and create something that's manufacturer, and if it's a publisher, it's manufacturing. So, and you know, there's a huge body of law interpreting, as in, let's say, Concord Publishing from Missouri. You know, he says, well, it's Arizona specific language. Well, no, the use directly in manufacturing is the same language that's used in all of the use deductions, and the courts have all held, in all the cases citing, uh, cited, that um, newspaper publishing is manufacturing. In reply, they come back with the Kentucky case from 1921, which says that it's not manufacturing. Well, we distinguish that below, and I'll cite to the court at, um, the record at 48, page 10 to 11. The legislature in Kentucky responded to that by reversing it and saying, no, 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 newspapers do get it. And we cited the later case that said, in fact, not only do newspapers get the deduction from machinery and equipment, but they get it for things like batteries for the report, for the photographer's cameras. So they take it much further back. Um, the department's argument to get out from all of this is that, well, why is an inferential one, as Judge Hell noted, why would you specify job printing if you, if publish, if uh, manufacturing included publishing? And that's because job printing has been a difficult issue for the Arizona courts. And if you look at, they cite service merchandise, but service merchandise is really dealing with what it means to use. If you look at Questex and Valpac, they're concerned with where do you draw the line between, in, in job printing, between creating a tangible personal property and providing a service. And so, the, and I think the Court of Appeals said in Valpac, this is a really tough line to draw. Whether this is like a service or whether it's producing a tangible personal property. The legislature made this very simple because they said you've got manufacturing, which we know includes publishing, but lest there be any doubt about where the line is, job printing, it gets treated the same way as publishing qua manufacturing. So the legislature has said, no, all you people with your printing presses, regardless of what you're printing, you all get the deduction. The department now, having conceded 
1984, in the letter to PNI, that they were a manufacturer and could grab it for presses, take the deduction for presses and computers used in the actual manufacturing. And the New Times, in, in the Boda decision in 1993, where the only issue at that point was whether it was used directly and it's indistinguishable software, the department is now claiming for the first time, oh, no, no, publishers were never manufacturers to begin with. This would be a surprise to the legislature, which thought it was expanding the scope of the deduction, not admitting that there was a huge gap. The striking thing is we posed the question in our brief, why would the, why would the legislature bring in to the deduction job printing, but yet exclude the kind of printing publishing that's conventionally been thought of as manufacturing and therefore already covered? And the department's argument is, well, publishing has to be done locally for a newspaper, where, so therefore it's going to be here anyway, whereas the legislature wanted to encourage people to locate their printing here. I'm not sure any either of those propositions is factually supported by anything or is even logical. You can have printing done anywhere, you could have publishing done anywhere, whether it's a newspaper, a weekly, a monthly, a daily. The striking thing is that the Louisiana Supreme Court in the Dupre case in 1890, before we had airplanes and I think Model Ts, took it on and said newspaper publishing was manufacturing and said certainly from a mechanical point of view, newspaper publishing presents all the essentials of manufacturer under every definition of the word. And then the court anticipated this kind of odd argument and said it also clearly comes within the reason and motive of the exemption, which was to encourage enterprises that furnished employment to home labor in the making of things which people use and require and which if not made here would be brought abroad. So even in 1890, when transportation was difficult, the court said, of course, newspaper publishing makes sense for, the, for an exemption that's trying to encourage you to invest here rather than in some other state. And now when you know, things are done everywhere and you know, physical location is increasingly unimportant in the economy, to try to draw a distinction and say, no, Arizona was only concerned about printing here, wasn't concerned about publishing here, in light of the conventional understanding of publishing as manufacturing, I think is completely unsupported, if not, uh, frankly, bizarre. Uh, the other argument the department made in their briefs, which apparently Mr. Fries was not relying on here, was the notion that, well, P&I is taxed under the publishing classification. Well, that's the wrong person to look at. The person you, the party you look at for classification is CCI. It's the one paying TPT under the a transaction privilege tax under the retail classification. The marketing, the machinery and equipment deduction is not based on PNI's tax classification. It's based on their operations. So, for example, um, you know the the deduction goes to equipment used in manufacturing, fabricating, and processing. We don't have tax classifications for manufacturing, processing, and fabricating. Uh, there's no correlation between, you know, the purchaser's tax classification and the nature of their operations. Those are just apples and oranges. The only thing that accounts is that CNI was paying under the retail classification and therefore was entitled to take the deduction based on the activity, the operations in which the equipment, the software it sold was being used. Now, to talk about a little bit about the use directly, we have, as the Arizona Supreme Court made clear when it adopted this court's ruling in Duval Sarita, the integrated rule. The integrated rule is far broader than the Ohio rule. In the reply brief, the department talks extensively about Concord Publishing, the Missouri Supreme Court's opinion, which deals with very similar kind of pagination software for newspaper publishers. Concord we cite throughout because it is the right precedent. Missouri applies the same rule that this state applies, the integrated rule, and holds that it's used directly. Then the department goes on and talks about the daily press case from Virginia, which holds that pre-press activities are not included. But they acknowledge that Virginia didn't follow Concord Publishing because Virginia doesn't accept the integrated rule that Arizona and Missouri have. They have the Ohio rule. So what they're left to do is to say, yes, Arizona has adopted the integrated rule, but we're going to argue this exactly the same way as if this were under the Ohio rule, that we're going to look at the actual printing practice. So they're saying, well, look at what happens in Deer Valley, not what happens downtown. Now, but if we were... Doesn't capital castings 
resolve is at least uh, this court tried to say that you know it wasn't related and the Supreme Court corrected that determination well especially after the legislature got involved and made the statute retroactive to 1977. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this has been a really, a, a completely resolved issue. And they talk about the physical process, but if you read Capital Castings, the court said, look, you have to look at, does it physically touch the raw materials, or does it manipulate or affect the raw materials or work in progress, or does the item add value to the raw materials or the work in process, as opposed to simply reducing costs or relating to post-production activities. This manipulates the raw materials and the work in progress. It adds value to it. In fact, it creates it. Because without this software, what are you publishing? What are you printing? This is telling the printers, this is how you will print it. This is the content you will print in the form you will print. And the department says, well, that's really journalism. As the Ninth Circuit po pointed out, journalism is about content, not format. This software is all about formatting formatting the content in a particular way for a particular production process, and then informing the production process how to operate. So both halves of the software entirely is part of manufacturing. If you weren't manufacturing, you wouldn't use this. If you were doing it online, you wouldn't use the software. In fact, they don't. They use Enigma, which is for AZ Central. So this, is, this replaces everything I used to do on the production team in college for the college newspaper. It's the software equivalent of linotype machines and fonts and boxes and physical manifestations. Um, the interesting thing, of course, is the department's taxpayer ruling 94-2. When they're dealing with job printing, they said all this pre-press, typesetting, all that stuff, that's all directly used. Their only distinction is to say, well, that's because job printing is covered, but publishing isn't. Again, it all collapses back onto their first argument, which is that um, publishing of books and newspapers and magazines is not manufacturing, because they've given it up on job printing that it's directly used. And the reason uh, the legislature added job printing was they wanted to make sure that things that were arguably not manufacturing got the same deduction as what was. This was not a limitation, it was an expansion. And for the department to come up with this new argument now and say, oh, it was all a limitation, is unsupported by anything the legislature has ever done. Unless the court has questions, uh, thank you very much. I'd like to go back to my music analogy because I think it's a good one. Making a guitar is manufacturing. Making a half a million LPs of guitar music is manufacturing. Playing a guitar in a studio for later recording, for later printing and making of LPs, is not manufacturing. But putting the guitar playing on a reel that is used to make the LP would be manufacturing? Printing on a reel-to-reel? -reel? You know. Recording. Yeah. When the, you the guitar record. music gets recorded. Correct. Right. On software and hardware and whatever it may be, it may it's be electronically in mixed to sound much better than it, than it really is. And that or even is, if it wasn't remixed. Even if it wasn't. But the bottom line is today it is an electronic, it is software, it is hardware. You walk into a studio, you engage in a creative activity, eventually that blank or that tape will be taken and something will be manufactured from that. But wait, that wait, is not manufacturing. I, I guess where I'm drawing the line is I would agree with you. Playing the, the guitar it's not manufacturing, right. but recording that on whatever equipment is used and transported to the LP factory is part of uh, manufacturing because without the recording, the LP has nothing. But without the content, work. exactly, no one would buy it. Correct. Without content, the issue is is content is a creative process. Well, manufacturing. So the the recording is a content, and if the recording is a content, then why is the guitar playing? Pardon me. If the if the recording itself is content and not manufacturing, correct. And why is the guitar playing? It is, it is cre the creation of content. It's not manufacturing. It's not the conversion of raw materials into a finished product. What takes place at a publisher's headquarters 
in downtown Phoenix or in downtown Manhattan is not manufacturing. E.J. Montini is not a riveter. The court, this court buys uh, software and hardware and this court writes opinions and eventually the opinion will be sent out and the opinion will be published. When it's published, the publisher, the job printer, will get the deduction. Why? Because they were given the deduction. But software used by the court to create, to write an opinion, to pick words, to select words, to craft paragraphs, that is not manufacturing. And again, we go back to the statute. If oh, if you saw how we did it, you would. It, it may be painful. <laughs> it may be painful. I agree. Uh, it breaks down, and we get to do it over and over and over. I, again, I so. don't doubt that. <laughs> same, so the same with my briefs, but. In the end, it all comes back to statute. We're talking about a deduction here. And the statute has to be clear, and it has to be unequivocal. And the, if the legislature intended that publishing, all the things that we're talking about, publishing, the creation of content, if they intended that publishing be given the exemption, be given the, the deduction, they would have said that in the same manner that they did job printing. They didn't. That has import, and that has meaning. And it has to be given meaning. And. Uh, if, if, if the statute said publisher, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be here. But it doesn't say publisher. And that was a purposeful decision on the legislative part uh, not to do that. And I don't think it's within the purview of the court to do that. I would, I would say, with my minute remaining, distinguishing the other cases, such, like, such as the Concord Publishing uh, and cases like that, uh, in capital castings, the Arizona Supreme Court talked at great length about manufacturing and the idea of physical proximity, the nearness of the, of the product, the nearness of the activity. And in this case, the nearness is not on the assembly line. The nearness could be, again, in this case, 20 miles away. It could be 500 or 1,000, whatever it might be. And the Missouri court in Concord Publishing poo-poo the idea of proximity. In this state, again, under both our, our statute and case law, Proximity is important. The physical conversion of, of raw material into a finished product is really what it's all about. So if the headquarters, if the printing facility and the headquarters were in the same building, that would make a difference? No, it wouldn't make a difference, no. The fact, the fact that you can do it 1,200 miles away makes clear that they are two totally distinguishable activities. Completely distinguishable. The Wall Street Journal is not printed in Hoboken and flown overnight for me to buy at Fry's every morning. It is printed here in Phoenix. It is sent electronically through the software in Manhattan. They send it electronically to a printing plant. A job printer here locally will publish it. A job printer, their activities, what they buy will be deductible. Why? It's in the statute, but a publisher is not. So Thank the you. job printer use the CCI software? Pardon me? Does the job printer use the CCI software to do that? I have no idea. If they do, it would be deductible. Thank you. Uh, we will take the matter under advisement and issue a ruling in due course. Uh, we're going to uh, uh, sit up here, let the uh, let these parties leave, let the next oral argument come in. Except for me, I'm going to go check my gas. Sure. And uh, yes. So we are um, adjourned.